Praise the Lord. Bless the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, prepare me. Oh uh -huh. 
thanks be to God. I greet you all my brothers and sisters in the wonderful name of our Lord and loving Savior Jesus Christ. We're about to start this program. I know I'm over to our moderator and our evening, our afternoon moderator is Pastor Anthony Richards. Thank you very much, Pastor Sophie. Just keep, um, just remain standing a little piece as we eat. Gonna be doing the opening hymn at this time. Even what to be said and what to be done, 
God, it shall be glory, it shall be honor, it shall be praise to you. God, no situation cannot determine who you are, because you are God and you are God above all. So we thank you, oh God, for giving us this privilege that we could, oh God, gather in such a manner. But oh God, and we pray as we come, oh God, that your Holy Spirit will be with us today. We pray, God, that you strengthen us as we go with. Hold us in thy mighty hand. Oh God, we trust you in everything. Without you, we cannot do nothing. So we come to you who is the Alpha and the Omega. We put the service into your hands. And we pray, God, that even by the end, somebody will come to realization that, oh God, even though we're standing, we're sitting, oh God, it could be one of us lying in casket. But oh God, we thank you, oh God, that today, oh God, you show forth mercy. And oh God, where the great glory to a nasty and the blood will walk in our veins. Oh God, touch our hearts, speak to us in a manner that we may look to you, oh God, and bow and surrender to you. God, I give you everything. I give you the moderator, I give those that have, oh God, who should be reading the scripture, oh God, who have been in your hands. We pray for a wonderful time today. Thank you even for the weather. Lord God Almighty, you still been good. You still been good to us. So as your way, Lord God, take control and let your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Brother Thomas. You may be seated. This afternoon we gather in this thanksgiving service to honor the life of Christine Rosemary here. And I just want to use this opportunity to recognize um, the clergy that is here with us this afternoon. Pastor Colin Anderson from the Church of God of Prophecy. Brother Byron Thomas who just um, prayed I want to especially observe um, oh. Reverend Heather Suki, the host pastor of this local church. And um, I saw Pastor Leon Walters on the program, not sure the person is here. Okay. I want to extend condolence on behalf of my family and I, and the Church of God of Prophecy of District 2, Manchester to the family and friends of Sister Gail. Words will never be able to explain how you're feeling right now. I know there is no word of comfort that would be sufficient to ease the pain that you are feeling. Whenever one passes, I take keen notice of the person's life. And I find comfort in knowing that a person dies in Jesus is not lost. And so I ask the family to rest in that comfort this afternoon. It's not a total loss. Um, she's just gone on before us and being faithful one day, there is going to be a grand reunion. And I personally look forward to, those, um, to that day when I will be reunited with loved ones and friends who have gone on before. As we continue the, the program, I'm gonna be asking um, that we pay attention please to our slots. And when we get to the tributes, I'm gonna be asking that we make the tributes, you know, um, within the, the, the boundaries of three minutes, please. We are asking that um, as much as possible so we can control the time that we spend here. At this time, we're gonna be listening to the first lesson being read to us. This will be coming to us from Psalm 46, verses one through to 10, and this will be read by Gabriel Gale, niece. And please note also, Psalms 46, verse 1 to 10. God is our refuge and strength, a very present in hope. 
Brent, Philip, and Joel. Derek Lord, Derek Lord, let the mountains be carried into the earth, removed, and though the mountains be carried into the earth, and left the sea. Through the waters, bear of roar and be troubled. Through the mountains, shake with the swelling there of sea. There is a river, a stream, and the The streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right her. The heathen rage, the kingdoms were moved. He altered, he uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. See you long. Come, behold the words of the Lord. What, what dissolution he hath made in the earth. He maketh war to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be ex exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. We honor it by saying. Thanks, Thanks Tijiba. Thank you very much, Gabriel and company, for that reading. We will now be listening to a selection, and this will be done by Sister Novelyn Anderson. She is from the Church of God of Prophecy in I know your life and earth is And only
God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. We will be listening to the second reading. And this will be coming to us from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 50 through to 58. This will be read by Nadine Ranger, neighbor. Our scripture lesson will be taken from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 50 through 58. And it reads thus. Now this, say, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit corruption. I go again. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh... Now I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that it is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 58 and last, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abound in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Here in the a portion of God's word, we honor it by saying, Thanks be to God. Thank you very much. You know, um, funeral is one of those places where we come and you are faced with our own immortality. The reality is so, um, so, pre so much present, reminding us that we are just passing through. We are pilgrim. Some stay a little longer than others, but one day all of us will be passing through this, this life. It is said that between birth and death, there is what is called a dash. And that dash is our lives. It is given to us by choice. And we govern it. We rule it. We do whatever we please. But at the end of our life, there is coming a day, an accountable day, when we will have to say to the maker, what did we do with that dash? I encourage us today to pay attention because there are some things that God expects us to do. And if we are not doing it, we are going to be held accountable on the day of judgment. Praise God. So I encourage everyone today, make your calling and your election sure. Because as sure as night follows the day, we are going to leave this earth. Amen. May not be right now, Amen. but it may be the next moment. So be, um, be, be, be aware and alert of that. We're going to be taking the tributes at this time, and then we're going to be taking them in this order. The first um, one is going to be coming to us from Pastor Colin Anderson. Then we're going to be having Shelly and Blake, who is going to read on behalf of, it's going to read by um, Amir Blake and company. And then we're going to have Sister Janice Rowe on behalf of Windsor Church of God. So you come in that order. Shall we praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. It, it's a bit of sweet service. But, but the sweet part is the sweet part, not the bitter part. And I just want to take this opportunity to say good afternoon to our coach pastor, the rest of ministers, bereaved friends, bereaved family and friends 
greeting in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm happy to have known Sister Christie. In a short while, I've seen her children begin to come to school very, very early in the morning, being the first children to reach Sunday school. And they'll inquire who are these children, and they say, Christie. I never know her. But there's another time when our brother Baron said to us, Whatever we need out of Sister Christie, just go on and ask, and we'll get it away. And I said, Who is this Christie? And when I went there and I said, How do you do to her? She said, Good morning, Pastor. And the way she said that, I know she was well trained, well loved, well mannerly. She said to me one day, she said, I just don't want to send my children to school, to Sunday school, I want to come to church. And I said, how are you going to do that? He said, I'm going to lock the shop. And I'm going to come to church. She came and she gave the Lord her heart. And from that time, she's a different person. She was already good, but from that time, she's a different person. And she said, one thing, Pastor, I always late anywhere I'm going. <laughs> but this time, I'm not going to be late. And I've seen her serve God from the depths of her heart. And then her illness begin to tell on her. And I can say in all my life experience, I've never seen a person feel so much pain, and in the pain, still worship God. Praise God. Praise God. Still worship God. I know the community have loved her, because she's a loving person. She loves God, and she loves people. Her big question is that when, her, when she was that ill, she began to fret her sorry over her children, and sorry over her mother and her, the rest of her relatives. And I was saying to her, leave it in the hand of God. Leave it in the hand of God. Finally, I, I remember one, but before this gets so bad on her, she came to church one day and for the entire service she was under pain. And you can see it on her face. And when she wants to go back home, it seemed like she couldn't even go back home. I asked her, can you go back home? She said, yes, Pastor. He said, can I turn around the cafe and eat every time? He said, yes, Pastor. I said, thank you very much. I want to say, she lived an outstanding life. We ask the church that everybody, when they pray, always keep her on the prayer line. And when she was about to pass, she said, how much you would want the entire church to be there. And I'm being happy in my heart for the life that she displayed. I don't know if it's been a long, long time, but that which I see, I give God glory. Amen. God bless you, Jesus Christ. Bless the Lord. Christine never let it any. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. When Christine I worship, she worship, man. So nobody make you come dead up, dead up the team. We are here for Thanksgiving service. We are not here for funeral service because we are not sure if Christine was sealed. We are here for Thanksgiving service because we can say the life that Christine lived, we can say she was saved. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. On behalf of our pastor, Pastor Heather Suki, and the executive body of the Windsor Forest Church of God, and members, we want to give our condolence to the Gales family. We know it's not easy, but with Jesus, you can make it. With Jesus, you will get through it. And you will understand it better when the mist is rolled away. Sister Olive, keep on being faithful. God knows why. Sister Christine was feeling a lot of pain. But even during that time, she still would encourage somebody. I remember once she sent a message to tell me, 
that I should keep on praying. God hear your prayer and so on so on. She was in pain, but yet she was encouraging me. And because of that, we can rest with that assurance that if at all we live for Christ, we will meet Sister Christine again. Sister Christine was a member of the Church of God of Prophecy at the farm. But she was like a dual citizen. She was like a member in farm and a member out here. Because when Sister Christine is down, we are down too. When Sister Christine is up, we are up too. Because she was that kind of person who whenever she's ailing, she will tell you, I'm not feeling well today. Remember me in prayer. She was that kind of person that she knows that God answers prayer. It matters not what, God answers prayer. And us here at Windsor Forest Church of God, because we believe in prayer, we stand tall with her and the family during her illness. God saw that a cure was not going to be. So he fixed her up and he fixed her, scrub up all the rough edges and nice her up and say, come home my daughter, there is better things for you over on the other side. So he took her home. See, Christine was very caring, very, very caring. And all of us can attest to that. Age, she was very humble. Humble, humble, humble. You could almost lead her with a straw. Are very respectful. I, she was irreversible. She is irreversible and she is inhuman. Yes. She is selfless. T. She was very trustworthy. E. She was energetic. N. She was noble and nice. E. She was enthusiastic. G. She was grateful. A. She was very ambitious. They say life begins at 40. Christine was just 45. She just started life. So she was young and vibrant. She, L. She was lovable. E. She was elegant. That's Christine Gale.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. I am reading this tribute on the behalf of my mother and the life she and Aunt Christine shared. Mom and Aunt Christine used to be very close. They grew up together. They never had a dull moment. She was kind, loving, and hardworking. She was well-loved, and we had a good relationship. For the first job Aunt Christine did, I looked a job for her in St. Elizabeth. Before she started her own business, Christine, Christine left for England and came back when her sister, Maxine, died. We still be up and down, we share texts and phone call. She always said to me, you're rough, I would say, you stay dear. If your sweetness pick you out and if your sweetness suck you out. <laughs> It turned, out, it turned out to be a laugh. She always says, sis, get your visa. I would say, sis, foreign me live. To because they have to take, take plane, come here. It turned out to be a laugh. Some of the time she would send the money to me to work on her house, pay the workmen. I always want to have my own way. She would say, you're too rough. I would say, that's how September people stay. It turned out to be a laugh. We text every day, only the last few weeks she could not dial the phone on her own. If I should love today, it would full a direct direction. When her baby father and a family friend visit her, they put her on video call. She said to me, Sis, you know how this go? Never know she have like two more weeks to go. I want to go now, but no visa now. I'm going to know the importance of a visa in August when I follow her to the airport. I never know I would not see her live again. These are some of the texts from my sister. Enough love, thanks for Thanks for helping me through my journey. I wish nothing but the best for you. We are two first cousins, but always say we are sisters. Sleep in pieces. I miss you dearly. If money could bring you back, you know that as you would always say, me don't, I would walk and beg. Sleep in peace, my dear beloved sister. You've gone to a better place. The point was too much for you. We and you would sleep and talk all the time. Type an old story, sleep in pieces. You gone to a better place. Rest in peace, God but not you. Oh yes. Thank you, um, Pastor Anderson. Thank you, Amir, and Sister Rose. I didn't know Christine that well. I saw her, but I didn't really know her that well. And I have listened to so many um, beautiful comments about her. But there is a testimonial here today that confirms to me that what is said is true. And it is a fact that she brought out the community in this way yes. to her um, celebra life celebration. Just to be celebrating this moment, it speaks value. And it confirms that whatever is being said here today is really, really the truth. I know she will be missed, but take courage. As, um, uh, as Shelly Ann says, she has gone to a better place. Amen? Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to be raising an offering. And we're going to be doing the hymn. I'm going to ask the ushers to uh, get to the start. So we're going to sing of a joyful time that is coming. Hallelujah. When we shall see Jesus. Amen.
had to cook and so we put them on duty and Christine never frowned. She was always willing and ready. Academic. Christine was a very brilliant girl. And there was no subject that I taught her that she could not master. You see, in those days, when I was the only person who had to teach those classes, I used Christine to help the slow children. And she was very willing to do it. She was not selfish, but used her great intellectual ability to help the less fortunate students at Campbell's Castle. I remember vividly when I first met the grade nine girls, big girls, I said to them, you can become anything you want to achieve. At that time, our school was done. I encouraged them to be the best that they can become. Whether they are a teacher, a carpenter, a nurse, or a business person. I set high ideas for them. And I'm very proud that Christine was a model business person. It has been proved by researchers that parents who take part in PTA meetings their children always do much better. When I just came to Campus Castle, only six parents from the PTA, and Miss Olive was one of those parents. My friends, Christine had a rare sense of humor that would keep you smiling for days. There were no gloomy moments when she was around as her laughter and infectious smile drove gloom and sadness away. She endeared herself to both young and old, her peers and her elders. From 1991 until now, we have been very good friends. When I retired some years ago, I no longer was in active service, I used to what's up her. She was always proud to tell me about the progress of her children, especially Priscilla. You see, when Priscilla first came, we had the old bed. And Priscilla went over and said, Teach my way, shall I work in the bed? Ping the leg, ping the leg, ping the leg. Now we have to go far away. We no longer are bringing the bell pingling. We have electric bell. <laughs> I always encourage her and put her on my prayer list when she told me that she was sick. The respect that we both had for each other never waned. I have not only lost a good friend, a past student, but a confidant to live in the hearts of those you love is not to die, but to live. Her passing will leave a void that will never be filled. The vast gathering this afternoon is an indication of the high esteem that we held her in. In closing, may I borrow some words of Fred, Fred Bruno that he used to memorize his friend Helen Stimmer Wright. And I quote, she was different, she was special, unique in a thousand ways. 
She was loving, she was giving. And we'll miss her, miss her all our days. May her blessed soul rest in peace and light perpetual shine upon her. Amen. shine before men that they may see their good works your good works and come to glorify your father who is in heaven Christine Gale has lived a good life you ever with me say amen amen, amen. amen. let me say how do you do to the moderator the pastor Anthony Richards all officiating ministers on the platform Good how do to you and all other persons on the platform. Good how do you do. Uh, members of the clergy in the audience, we acknowledge you, including Reverend Lambert, who just spoke, past principal of the campus at Castle Primary School. All you wonderful people, and most of all, the bereaved family. Good how do you do to everybody. Turn to their neighbor and say, good how do you do. Come on, turn to the next person and say, good home. Yes. As Pastor said, it is a mixed feeling this afternoon. You know what? We are here to celebrate the life of a champion. The life of a champion woman. You know, she didn't speak loudly, but the work that she did was, I mean, spoke volume. She went the extra mile in doing everything that she could do, especially for her family members and children. And today we want to salute her work and her worth. I remember, you know, speaking about to, to her about several different projects. One of the time I went by this, the shop, I saw her there and I was talking to her about a project coming up. And she was like, I am not well, but I am willing to help. And I tell you, she is a very, very supportive parent. I'm not going to take you long, you know, because um, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to be obedient to her. Right? But I tell you, this woman is somebody who has touched many lives. And of course, we will always remember her legacy. Several teachers are here, members of the staff. Several parents are here. Several children are here from the campus as a primary school just to support this family, this wonderful family. We thank you, Mommy, for giving her, you know, to us. And of course, she has served us. She has served her family. She has served this community honorably. And so this afternoon, we salute her. I have with me our PTA president, 
who will pay tribute on behalf of the parents and our children will pay tribute on behalf of the student body. Put your hands together for everybody. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the PTA of the Campus Castle Primary and Infant School, we just like to express our sincere condolences to the bereaved family. Keep the faith. You may feel down and feel like God has somehow forgotten that you are.
and so nice to see, and light perpetually shine upon her. The songwriter says there's a place up there for people like Christine, and we believe it. God bless you all. child of Olive and Bert Gale. She was born in the district of Windsor Forest in the parish of Manchester. She grew up in Windsor Forest where she attended the Campbell's Castle all age. 
As a little girl, she was very kind. She was a very kind and loving person. She was loved by most young and old men, and she didn't have a lot of lady friends. After graduating from the Campbell's Castle All Age, she went on to, to do cosmetology. She fell in love with Roy Francis and had her first daughter, Priscilla Francis. Roy migrated, leaving her with the baby. As a result, she left the baby with her parents and siblings and went to work in St. Elizabeth, starting her own business there. However, it was slow, which led her to migrate to work in England, seeking a better life. She spent nine years working in England. The death of her sister, Maxine, caused her to return to Jamaica. Soon after, she decided to continue her education and completed a nursing course at a nursing institution. She, however, did not work in that field, as she found she did not like it. Christine fell in love once more, having her second daughter, Kendra Witter. After having Kendra in St. Elizabeth, she came back to Manchester and started working with her brother in his shop. But not long after, Christine started her own business once more in the district of Farm. She then fell in love with Clarence King and had her only son, Carter King. She continued her business successfully until the 14th of February, 2020. She came home from her business place feeling sick. She had severe headaches followed by a seizure. That occasion marked a change in her life. She later went to the Mandeville Hospital and was admitted and spent five days. From then, she was in and out of the hospital. During her sickness, she was invited to church. She made the decision to walk with the Lord in water baptism and was baptized by Pastor Colin Anderson. She went to church and farm, but at that time she could not make it there and stopped at the Windsor Forest Church with her mother. She was present at every fasting she heard of, hoping she would get better, but it was not so. She left to stay with her daughter in the United States on the 4th of August, 2022. Unfortunately, she was only able to spend a short time at her house as she was back in the hospital. She was a very shy young lady. Even though she was not well, she still did the best she could as not to depend or burden anyone. She was helpful to everyone. She loved her children with an everlasting love. She liked only the best of things for her kids. So leaving her two small children to go away was a pain for her. She told them she was gone to get better and would come back in December. She would call and text her kids every day until she got worse in November. At that point, her mother and Marlene went to the States to spend the last moments with her. She was so loving that the nurses would converse with her, where she would tell them about her brothers and her sister, and she and her cousin Shelley were like sisters as they grew up together. She left to mourn mother, Olive, brothers Michael, Cecil, Colin, and David, two daughters, Priscilla and Kendra, and father, her only son, grandson Kyle, who share birthday with her, their friends Clarence, two aunts, three uncles, nine nieces and nephews, a house, host of cousins and friends. The last song she was singing is the old rugged cross. And when he was on the cross, Jesus had me on his mind. Oh, dearest Christine, I know you are smiling, looking down from up above. We will miss you forever. As we gather here today to celebrate your life, your memory, 
will never be undone. May your brightness always shine down on us from above as your soul rests in perpetual peace. She is looking down upon us even now. Amen. Right, we're going to be listening to the combined choir um, that's Farm and Windsor Forest. And after the choir, down the rendition, the next voice you hear will be that of our host pastor, Pastor Heather Suki. I trust that you will give heed to the word and hear what the Lord has to say to us today in this session. Quiet.
boys away me over there. Today, my brothers and sisters, it is really a sad occasion, but my heart is full of joy because I know what I know. But oh, bless the name of Jesus. I greet the Holy Spirit who is present with us today. I want to greet our able moderator who have done a wonderful job, Pastor Anthony Richards. Well done, sir. Our pastor, Colin Anderson, greeting in the mighty name of Jesus. Also, Minister Thompson, Thomas, I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. Other ministers who are in the congregation, I greet you. Oh, and please permit me to greet um, the principal of the Campbell Castle School down there. We need to talk. And uh, our mother, um, our choir greeting. What could we do without our, our musician? Brethren, we will look at the musician. We will look at the musician. But indeed, our, our, our um, family, my family, the gay family, I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus. And I would say today, my topic to you today, that, oh, bless the name of Jesus, do not weep, do not weep. Let not your heart be troubled. Let not your heart be troubled, brethren. And um, I have here a, a, a tribute from the women of the Church of God. Um, um, I'm, I'm going to read it, sir. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. The women of the Church of God. On behalf of the women of the Church of God, region to two, let me express sincere condolences to the Gales family. I must express deepest condolences to especially our sister Olive Gale. Sister Olive, you've been a hard-working member of the MCG and we appreciate you. We heard you on many occasions requesting prayers for your daughter Christine. We knew you love her and took the best care of her. We can just imagine your pain. Sister Olive, we are saying to you, God is too wise to be mistaken. God is too good to be unkind. So when you don't understand, when you don't see his plan, when you don't trace his hand, trust his heart. We are praying for your strength, Sister Olive. Understand your grief, and he is with you. He reminded us in his word. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up the wound. That's Psalms 147, verse 3. I am on the I, I call on the family to lean on God and allow him to continue the process of healing your broken heart. Sister Oliver family. Please know that the women of Region 2 are standing with you. You can lean on us. God bless you all. And I can attest to this. Yesterday morning, uh, brethren, we were out for 30 on the prayer group praying. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. I won't, I won't speak for long, brethren. I'm not a long speaker, but today the word comes to us from John 14, it's a well-known passage, John chapter 14, and it thus read, Do not let your heart be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you, I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with me that you also may be, may where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. 
Papa said to him, Lord, we do not know where we are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to me except through, no man comes to the Father except through me. If you already know me, you would know my Father as well. From no one, you do not know from no one you do know him and have seen him. I want to tell you, Philip said, Lord, show me the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said, Don't you know me, Philip? Even after being among you such a long time, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show me the Father? Don't you believe? I will stop there. God, we thank you for the word that you have provided for us, Lord. Father God, I pray, oh God, that you will touch heart, touch mind, comfort mighty God, every weeping heart, every weeping soul, that God, when we leave from here, mighty God, our soul will be at peace with you. Brethren, this was Jesus Christ. Being with his disciples for over three years. Jesus was about to leave, to go back to that place where he, um, I would say, the Bible said provide, but that's where he's coming from. Knowing that he was here on a mission. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. I want to tell you, brethren, that Jesus Christ was on a mission here. Oh, 
life was. But oh, bless the name of Jesus. And Jesus Christ now telling me that he is going away. God oh, bless the name of Jesus. And you see, brethren, that's why so much question was thrown to Jesus Christ. And what Jesus Christ never back down. He answered them because Jesus Christ wanted them to know what his mission, the mission that is that is on. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. So, um, um, John 3 verse 16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That is what Jesus Christ came here. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Of the glory of our Lord and loving Savior. 
Savior Jesus Christ. We fall short in our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds. We disobey God's commandment. Merely, I'm mean, telling this one. But we need to revisit ourselves. But the beauty about everything, God promised that He will never leave us, nor forsake us. He will never leave us stranded on in our hopeless situation. I know today that Reverend and the only dead the pack of a bring trouble night to the you know. We have other situation. What situation? Christ said, let not your heart be troubled. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. We are here to weep and to tell my sister, let not your heart be troubled. But yet still, she will heart be there a tear out. So brethren, it goes for all of us. We must believe in God, trust in God. We can't tell sister Ali if we trust in God and we not trust in God. Too. Not true. You understand me now? We cannot do that. Trust in God, my brother. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. On that resurrection morning, that Easter morning, Jesus went to the um, went to defeat and went not as defeat, but in victory. The victorious son returned to his father. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. He ascended to heaven.
I want them who wouldn't want to follow Jesus today. Oh, praise God. This is a good day to give um, total submission and surrender to Jesus Christ. Praise God. A day when we are reminded that we are frail and that our being here, here on this earth, is but for a short time. I, I, I hope that the word of God has found a place in your heart. And it is my prayer that there is somebody here who didn't know Jesus um, as personal Lord and Savior, that today will be your day. I, I said to you today, as I will be um, inviting um, is, um, Pastor Leon, he's not here? Okay. I'm going to be a, he's, okay, okay. I, I, I want to say to you today, as he, as he comes, don't leave this life not having your life anchored in Jesus Christ. I beg somebody today, don't leave this life not knowing Jesus Christ. Because what's on the other side, you really, really don't want to know. I say to you, and the truth is that because you don't know when that date is, or when the time is, don't idle and waste your time feeling that you have enough time. The scripture says, no, if you will hear his voice today, praise God, do not harm your heart. I invite um, uh, Pastor Leon Walters to come and he will be praying for the family. And if there is somebody here who want to start your walk with Jesus right now, if you just indicate, I'm sure Pastor Walters will be praying for you as well. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. May I just invite us to stand as we seek to stand in the gap for the family. This is a moment that is hard, hard for the family to contend with. And so as we stand, we are committing them to the Lord and we are encouraging their hearts. A link of the chain is missing, and so much more strength will be required for fewer links to maintain the same way. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father and our God, you who are creator and sustainer of this vast universe, we thank you, Lord, for life. And it might sound ridiculous to say thanks for death, but your word on keen analysis of it suggests to us that once our life is hid in yours, we should not fear death. And so death is that gateway of being in the presence of your God. So Lord, many fear death because their state is hopeless. But for the believer, the believer should not be afraid to die. Yet even believers are afraid of death. But how can we go to heaven, Lord, and we are afraid to die? This afternoon, we know, Lord, that because of how we have been made, we grieve and we mourn at the passing of our loved one. We cannot become accustomed to death because at the outset, Lord, we are not created to accept death. But death came because of our sinfulness. Yes. Father, you remind us that you are the counselor, the wonderful counselor. And so Lord, we rely on you to counsel our family who is grieving at this moment. Friends and loved ones also because of the cherished relationship that they had with Christian. For God, in your wise providence, Lord, 
you have seen it fit to take her into eternity. And so, Lord, we pray for the family. It is a difficult moment. And sometimes, Lord, if we're not careful, we will be upset with you. We become angry with you. And we can blame you for many things, Lord. But we thank you to know, Lord, that we have a hope within our souls. And we believe, God, that as she has committed herself to you, as has been shared, she will find her peace with you. So we pray for the family, Lord, and we pray for every single family member, every single sibling, mother, God, Sister Olive has lost her two daughters. It's not easy for her. But God, we pray that she'll find her strength in you. We pray for every single member of the family who is having to deal with it in their own way. Grieving is a process. And it continues even for a lifetime. And so Lord, we pray that as individuals, we will just seek to give that hug, that smile. We we'll just seek to give that counsel that is wise. And if we're going to be getting into problems by saying something, we will not say anything. We thank you, Lord, and we pray very specially for every single member of the family. We pray also for those who have heard your word today, as our moderator has alluded to. And we pray, God, that they see the need to commit themselves to you before it's too late. Because all that matters is salvation. All that matters is for us to reach heaven. What shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? And so Lord, we thank you for what you have in store for us. Breathe upon the family we pray. And as we stand in solidarity for this family, I pray that they reflect on our faith and the hope that we have for them. And they'll gain strength and wisdom. For to you be all glory. To you be all honor. And we tell you thanks, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated.
carry your phone. You know, huh? carry your phone. Okay, carry on there, come? Yeah, it's on your submit. Yeah, carry it back. Yeah. Uh.
Voilà, quoi, la bouche, hein. L'autre, ça va, non, ça va. Yes, Daddy, go to yes. And um, 
um, right here up on the back of the program, the family of the late um, Christine Rosemary Gale would like to express their thanks and appreciation to all those who support them during this time of bereavement. Thanks for your prayer, telephone calls, and word of encouragement. Thank you all. No, me me reach up, me salive, me salive, I see, me got a kitchen. Oh, so you're going to get kitchen. Oh, yeah, I want roti. Yeah, so, roti and fish. Mm -hmm. Then find anyway, the way in there, they want to roti and fish, did they? Let's see what other one, so I don't have. So what are you doing up in my face? Because I get paid. Yeah, in there. You well, uh, get pay for doing it? You get pay for doing it on your feet? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, and you're going to sit down beside me. Nothing wrong with that. You're going to sit down there. You want to come here? You should take me to go mash up. No, mash up. My head. You're a pretty sweet lady and nothing wrong with it. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. You're so stupid. Your video is already on the church. It can't. Oh, Jesus, see, Papa. Look at the same thing. Come on, you're going to go. 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 Come on, you're going